a wonderful time in the presence of the Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you. Welcome to our Youth Sunday service where the youths will be taking over this morning. Yours truly, I am the worship leader and welcome to our brand new youth worship team members. We have two, two additional members to our worship team. We have two additional members to our worship team. That's Sky and Brother Liam. So I hope you all will be blessed by what the youths have to offer this morning. We will now stand as we open in a word of prayer. I invite you all to stand. And Brother Arnold, will, can you do us the favor of opening, opening us up in a word of prayer? Thank you. Dear Lord and Savior, we come to you another time. Thank you and praising you for your mercies and blessings throughout the week and even up to today, dear God. Thank you for the wonderful showers of blessings you have bestowed upon us, dear God. We commit this service into your hand. Everything that shall be said, everything that shall be sung, everything shall be done, that will be done to your honor, praise, and glory. We commit all, everything in your hand, and we thank you for what shall be done in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Brother Arnold. Um, we will now go into, we will now have our scripture reading, which is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 10 through 17. And we will read responsively. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. Let, but let every man take heed how he built it thereupon. For other found... Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. Every man work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because shall be in his fire, and the fire shall try any man's work that if any man's work abide which he has built thereupon. He shall receive a reward. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? And we will read together. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Amen, amen. Thank you for reading with me. You all did a wonderful job. We will now go into this morning's worship service. And we will start off with standing on the promises.
you standing on the promises of God this morning? Amen, amen. It's a wonderful thing to be standing on the promises of God. Our next song will be, Jesus is the rock on which I stand. Now, it's, it's Youth Sunday, so I expect all the youths, even the ones behind me, to be doing the action. And I also expect the crowd, the congregation, to be doing the action as well. So when it says he's above, below, before, behind, and around you, you have to let them know he's everywhere. So I expect to see you all be doing he's above, below, before, behind, and all around you. Amen, amen. You all did a wonderful job at the actions. That takes me back to my Wesleyan days where, where my, our teachers would always tell us when, you, when you're singing it for the crowd, you better make sure you do it. I sure, I'm sure Marquis remembers. <laughs> but good job with the actions. Give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> We will now go into our tithes and offering. It's offering time. This is a sweet, sweet one. We have a medley. Mm -hmm. Give, 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 and it shall be given you. It is raining. Send down the rain, and we've got the victory. 
It Is Raining was actually a request made by Brother Ezekiel. He likes that song, so I was like, okay. So you see, our youths, our youths are liking, are liking what we do in church, and that's what it's all about. We will, I will now ask Sister Bernier, can you bless the tithes and offering for us, please? Praise the Lord. Good morning, church. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for bringing us to this day today. We know, Lord, that we don't know what's going to happen in the next minute, in the next second, in the next hour, but you do. So we thank you that you have the whole world in your hand. As we're about to collect this offering, we ask, Lord, that you'll direct us as we use it to the furtherance of your kingdom. We ask a special blessing on the youths as they take charge of this service today. We ask that you'll comfort their hearts, give them grace and peace as they lead us. We pray that as an, a congregation, we'll be supportive as well. We thank you for those worshiping online. We ask that everything today will be done according to your honor, praise, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Give, give, give.
I know the song says it is rain and send down the rain. I know, and God has been answering our prayers. Look at the amount of rain that we've been getting for the past week. I believe those are showers of blessings. Anybody else agree? Amen. And we have the victory. Every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. Amen. We will now go into our congregation, congregational prayer as we sing, as the dare panted.
more time and I love. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I have to make an appeal this morning. Um, it's something that came in my mind. I don't believe in coincidences. God is sovereignly, sovereignly in charge of the universe. Sometimes you come to church and you figure, well, you just come because you want to come. I want to tell you, if you're here this morning and you're not saved, you're not here because of coincidence. You're here because God takes special interest in your life. God takes special interest in your life. You may not have, at any point in your life, made a confession of faith. Actually accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. I know this is not something that some folks like to hear, but... It is the very reason why we are left in the universe, in the world, to share the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. And to let men and women know that Christ made a serious offering, a sacrifice on the cross, so that people doesn't have to die and go to a, in eternity without God. I truly believe that I need to do everything I can to let people know that after you die, there is nothing I can do or anyone else can do. Nothing. It's over. No amount of lies before a person who is dead is going to save them. If you die without Jesus Christ, there's only one place for those persons. One place. Let me say it again. One place. That is not even hell, sad to say. That is called a lake of fire. But God, Christ died for our sins that we don't need to go to that place. Now, if you're already saved, you don't need to worry about anything like that. If you're saved, you are safe. Amen. I say amen. amen. But if you love people, you need to tell them the truth. And so this morning, I want to appeal to you. There may be someone here who have not made that decision for Jesus Christ. Now is the time. Now is the time. I, tomorrow is that promise to you. I'm not preaching this morning. just telling you what is important. I'm just telling you what is important. Father and our God, we thank you so much. We are so grateful that you loved us. You gave us hope. Many of us, oh God, knew, knew quite well that if it wasn't for you, we would not be here this morning in this congregation. Many of us may have been in prison or dead. That's just the fact, Lord. Not only may we have been in prison or dead, we could have been on the street like anyone else. God, we thank you for your grace and we thank you for your mercies. We thank you for where you have brought us from, Lord. You have brought us a, a mighty long way. Some of us didn't even know how we we're going to turn out. We, as a matter of fact, society gave us no hope, no chance. But God, we realize if God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but gave him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? We are so thankful for your mercies. We are so thankful for your grace. We are so thankful, O oh God, for your tender compassion. We are so thankful for your mercies. Because it's of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Because new every morning, every morning, every morning, great is your faithfulness, Lord, unto us. And we say thank you. We say thank you, Lord. We thank you for the young people in our midst today. Oh, my God. God, I can't tell you. Uh, you know exactly what's going on in our territory. And we cover our young people today. We cover them with truth. That they will know, oh God, the truth of God's word. That first and foremost, they need to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all other things shall be added unto them. Lord, I pray you're covering upon them that none of these children under the sound of my voice today, their lives would end foolishly, but that God, they will serve you with all of their heart. And yes, if they die and the sacrifice of serving the Lord manfully, oh God, and, uh, you know, then okay, because they died knowing Jesus Christ. 
God, I pray you'll cover them in school, in colleges. Let not the wicked one touch them, oh God. Your word said you've called you young men, Ezekiel and the others. I've called you young men. Why? Because you are strong and the word of God abide in you richly. God, I pray in Jesus' name, the anointing of God will so fall on these young people, oh Lord. We thank you for each of them, Lord. May you continue to bless and Nikaya and everyone, oh God, who is in charge of this service today in the name of Jesus. My God, we don't take it for granted because we really want to see the best for them, Lord. But I know that the best start comes through Jesus Christ. The best way to start life is to know Jesus Christ. The best way to start life is to know Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, there is no real life outside of Christ. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and that no man comes unto the Father but by me. That your blessing poured out, Lord, not only on us here, but those, oh God, who are online today. Dear God, I don't think Miss Freeman is online, but remember her. Remember Sister Christopher, remember Sister Peters, oh God. Remember the others, Sister Otto, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And anyone else that I, I may have forgotten, Lord, I pray you'll mem remember each person today. Those who are sick and who are struggling, oh God, or who would have loved to be here but is not here today. God, remember each and every one. We want to thank you, Lord. We don't, we don't help us, Lord. Help me, help us, not just to sing about love but to be that as God has so decreed, that we are to love one another as he has loved us. Your word tells me greater love has no, man that, um, has no one than this, that a man should lay down his life for his friends. Oh, such love. And we thank you this morning for loving us like only you can. Lord, some people write us off. Just one look at us and they don't want to hear us. They don't want to see us. But I'm so glad you loved us even when we were unlovable. Bless the rest of this service today. In Jesus' name, amen. You all may be seated. Oh, you're already seated. Okay. Amen, amen. It is time for the welcome. It will be done by yours truly. So good morning again, church. I would like to welcome you on behalf of the youths, Pastor and First Lady Luke, Reverend Dr. Don Pont and Brother Pont, faith members, friends, followers, and everyone else who is a part of our temple and our church would like to welcome you to service this morning. I will start on my left, your right. Any visitors for the first time, please stand and be acknowledged. Any returning visitors who we haven't seen in a while, second, third, fourth, maybe fifth. I will, okay, moving on to the middle section. Any first time visitors, please stand and be acknowledged. Any returning visitors, you may also stand and be acknowledged. Second, third, fourth, probably fifth. Okay, okay, no, no worries. And my right, your left, any first time visitors, please stand and be acknowledged. Any returning visitors? Second, third, fourth. Oh, but 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 the pen? Please stand and be acknowledged. <laughs> Good morning, church. Well, it was away for a few, for a month now. And I had to go into the hospital to do some procedure stuff. And thank God, I'm back. But I will, I'll be leaving again this week. 
Kalau barang saya beli yang sempat di dalam kaki Tuhan. <laughs> amen, amen. Welcome. Welcome. Tahu juga itu Flower dan Chicago. We spend some time with my family. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Welcome back, Brother Penn. I, you tried to slip away, but you didn't get away. <laughs> you see, the crowd is on my side this morning. <laughs> and I just saw someone sneak in. Renee, please stand and be acknowledged. Would you like to say a couple words for us? Good morning, everyone. It's always great being back home. As usual, thank you guys for the prayers and thoughts as always. I'll be here for about, what, two, three weeks? So I'll be home. <laughs> amen, amen. That's our newest attorney. Attorney, attorney Richardson. Okay. All right. If there are no more Sister, Sister Wheatley, welcome. <laughs> you can clap for her. <laughs> okay, and if Okay, brother and sister Peters, they send their greetings to the church. So we would like to say hello. <laughs> and if that is all, I pray that you all continue to enjoy the rest of our service. We will now have the announcements done by sister Kyle Correa. Give her a hand as she comes. Good morning, church. We will read the 2024 mantra together. We will read this together. The timing for my good, for his glory. The verse of the month will be presented by Liam Garnett. The verse of the month is Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Come now and let let us reason together. Saith the Lord, saith the Charlotte, they shall be as white as snow. They'll be red like crimson. They shall be as wool. Bible trivia. What are the five shortest books in the Bible? <laughs> the the sh- the five shortest books of the Bible are Third John, Second John, Philemon, Obadiah, and Jude. Faith Westmere Holiness Church announcement for Sunday, November 17, 2024, as follows. Weekly prayer, prayers that availeth, Monday, 6 p.m. on Zoom. Midweek prayer, midweek prayer meeting, Bible study, Wednesday in the sanctuary at 6 p.m. 
Thursday morning Bible study comeback training, 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. in the sanctuary. Study to show thyself approved unto God. St. Thomas Virgin Islands Wesleyan Youth Department meeting, Friday, 7 p.m. on Zoom. Saturday rehearsal, men worship ministers and musicians, 5 p.m. in the sanctuary. Sunday, November 21st, Sunday School topic, the, the Uniting Force of Holy Love. Lesson focus, loving, loving fellow believers is evidence of God-empowered holiness. Key verse, Romans chapter 15, verse 5. Jubilee, Brother Sam Brown, 9 a.m. on Zoom. Sunday school classes in the sanctuary at 9.45 a.m. are First Fruits by Mother Marquise Brown. Redeemed by Sister Araminta Peters and Sister Naomi Henry. Victorious by Brother Erwin Peters and Brother Seymour Bernier. And the youth class by Sister Stephanie Brown. Sunday morning praise and worship, 11 a.m. in the sanctuary, Zoom and Facebook Live. Join us and invite others to be blessed. Important announcements. Faith Wesleyan Holiness Church, 37th Annual Conference, November 24, 2024, at 5 p.m. Atlantic Time on Zoom. Please keep Sister Green and family in prayer as she is the caretaker for her husband. She is doing okay but needs our prayers. Celebrating student success. Congratulations to Siona Green as a senior honor student. She is also representing her school varsity volleyball team in the statewide championships as they are the district champions. <laughs> Let's celebrate. Sunday, November 17th, 2024, happy birthday to Sister Margaret Jarvis. <laughs> Thursday, Thursday, November 30, 21st, 2024, happy birthday to Brother Vernon Holiday. <laughs> Friday, November 22nd, 2024, Happy birthday to Sister Martha Francois. <laughs> Friday, November 22nd, 2024. Happy birthday to Joanna Hiller. <laughs> now we sing. November 19th, 2024. Happy anniversary to Sister Luna Nev Fred and Mario Fred. God bless and have a great week. Good morning, church. Uh, I know the pastor asks for us to keep Sister Doris Christopher in prayer, and he normally does that every every Sunday. We ask to keep her in prayer. She, we know the challenges that she has. But she called me last night with an additional challenge. She said that she lost her sister yesterday in St. Kitts. Uh, the sister was standing up at a bus stop waiting to go to church, and a car came and ran her down and killed her, and killed her. So, you know, keep her in prayer. Uh, among the other challenges, she has to the moan lots of her sister. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
um, Sister Kael for the announcements. Great job as usual. <laughs> and um, Sister Richards, you'd like to say something? just to say thanks to all who supported the honorees banquet on Friday evening. I would say it was a very good outcoming and outgoing and happy occasion. Those that were there and I just want to thank you all. Um, those were, we had patrons from the church, we had ads from the church and we had our people from the church. They just didn't give their money. They came and supported. So I just want to say thank you very much. They say ungrateful people don't go much further. So I just want to say thanks and give you God all the praise because he deserves. Amen. Amen. We will now have a Youth Minute done by Brother Franklin Weeks, Jr. Good morning, church. How is my church doing? Today we're going to be doing um, some quizzes today. Um, we're going to start with some this, the veterans. Uh, Sister Pond. I'm supposed to give you the question. Hmm. What day did God create in man? <laughs> it's actually the sixth. Mama Luna. <laughs> what is the, f wait. How many books are in the Bible? Yeah, Pam. <laughs> um, who were the three sons listed, listed in the Bible? Wait. Never mind, let go to another question. How many people were saved on the ark? Sorry. 
a ver. This is Stephanie. Which and which NT book has Jesus' sermon on the mount? Which NT book has the has Jesus' sermon on the mount? Matthew. Okay, we got Miss Benet. <laughs> what was Isaac's son's name? Correct. <laughs> we're, we're gonna start with this is the last question. Grandma. <laughs> what is the longest book in the Bible? Correct. What is the what is the longest book in the Bible? John. You're right. Psalms. That was a wonderful youth minute. <laughs> Give him a round of applause. Oh, he turned the tables on y'all this morning. Mm -hmm. And instead of asking the questions openly, he called the names of those who he wanted to ask the questions. That was wonderful. Good job, Frankie. <laughs> We will now have our last song, which is entitled, How Great Is Our God. You're free to sing along and dance.
is our God. He's the name above all names. He's worthy of all praise and our hearts will forever sing. How great is our God. Amen. Mm -hmm. I agree. Amen. Amen. How great is our God. We have a little, what's, what's the word? We have a little, mm -hmm. and, 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 and I think on us today. So, you may be seated as we now have our devotion by none other. Before we get to the devotion, we will have a special selection by the Young Brothers in Christ. I walked among the shadows, you've wiped my tears away. And I felt the pain of heartbreak, and I've seen the brighter days. And I pray prayers to heaven from my lowest place. And I've held your blessings, God, you give and take away. No matter what, I have your grace is enough. No matter where I am, I'm standing in your love. No matter 
my dreams get broken and you will hope again no matter what i know i'm safe inside your hands on the mountains i will put my life to the one who sent me there in the valley i will lift my eyes to the one who sees me there when i'm standing on the mountain i didn't get there on my own when i'm walking through the valley Standing on the mountain, I didn't get there on my own. When I'm walking through the valley, I know I am not alone. You're a god of the hills and valleys, hills and valleys, god of the hills and valleys, and I am not alone. You're a god of the hills and valleys, hills and valleys, god of the hills. to say blessed be your name and I am not alone amen amen give them another round of applause Thank you, young brothers in Christ, for the wonderful selection, Hills and Valleys. <laughs> we will now have our devotion done by none other than Brother Marquise Brown. Okay, good morning, church. So the title for my devotion or short talk is God's plan for self-care. Okay, I'll open up in a word of prayer before I start the message, get into the message. So Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for this opportunity. We want to thank you for the youths as well who have been bless providing their blessings unto you there, God. Help us to continue to give our full portions. And I ask you to bless this message. Bless my words, dear God, that it will be your words and that it will bless everyone, dear God, and resonate with them. In your name I pray, amen. Amen. So, self-care. So, that's the topic for today, but we'll be looking at God's plan for self-care. So, I'll start with a scripture verse, and it's taken from 3 John, and it's verse 2. It says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in good health even as thy soul prospereth. So you might ask, does God has a self-care plan? Does he have a self-care plan? And the answer is yes. We'll look at it. So 
God's plan for self-care is personalized. So it's based on all our needs, but it's our individual needs because my needs might not be the same as yours, but we, God knows our needs. And God's plan for self-care is also intentional because he is an intentional God and he wants us to live intentionally as well. And it, it is also restorative. God wants to restore us daily. He wants us to be filled and we'll, I'll show a visual, and that would help with the restoration. God wants us to be restored every day. And it's also achievable, because we know in God, we can do all things. So he will put a plan in place that will be achievable and realistic for our individual needs. And lastly, God's plan for self-care is preventative. So that basically means that he is meeting us at the beginning, and he's given us the tools so we don't experience like burnout, fatigue, depression. He is thinking in ahead to prepare us for the future. Okay, thank you. So this is the visual that hopefully it will resonate and last with you all is the four buckets of self-care. And the first one is physical. God is concerned with our physical health. He is also concerned with our mental health, also our emotional health. And lastly, but importantly, our spiritual health. And if you look at it as a bucket, it's that he's restoring us. So he's pouring into us. And if in one of our buckets, if it's empty, it will affect our lives. So he wants us to be restored and going through life with these buckets filled. And it's um, 1 Thessalonians 5.23 says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, your whole soul and body of blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we are more we are mental, we are emotional and spiritual beings, and God cares about all of them. And we have taken a bit. So we could first look at the physical aspect of self-care. So first Corinthians six. 19 to 20, and it says, let's go. I will come back to that. First Corinthians 6, 19. We'll first look at getting at least seven hours of sleep. That is tied into our physical health, and it's achievable. Is you know, we have such a busy life, but if we take time to get sleep, it is so important. Proverbs 3, 24 says, when you lie down, you will not be afraid. Yes, you will lie down, and your sleep will be sweet. So God wants us to have that sweet rest that's also restorative, because it even shows that on the seventh day, God rested. So imagine if God rests, we have to rest as well. Eating healthy foods, and that's um, the verse is Proverbs 23, 20 to 21, and it says, Do not join those who drink too much wine or gorge themselves on meat. For drunkards and gluttons become poor, and drowsiness clothes them in rags. So we do have to be at, pay attention to what we're eating. We're putting into our bodies, and, you know, just be mindful of that. Also, not skipping breakfast or lunch. Um, you know, in the mornings, we rush in out the door, and we might not have breakfast. And then coming to the end of the day, we realize we didn't eat anything for the day. But we know we need for our physical body, we need that nutrient to sustain us. So as though our days and schedule might be so busy, we have to make sure that we're eating regular, regularly and healthily as well. Exercising and walking for at least four times per week. So having that physical exercise, get your body moving. And you can set goals as well. For, for me, I have a phone app, it's Samsung Health, and it's about 6,000 steps a day, that's a goal. You can set it to wherever is realistic for you. But make sure that you're moving and taking care of your physical body. And that ties in with regular checkups, making sure you're going to the doctor, the dentist, and, you know, the different checkups to make sure that your physical health is intact. So God cares about our physical bodies because we were created in his own image. He took a lot of time when he was creating us. Genesis 1.27 says, we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, 
which God prepared in advance for us to do. And lastly, our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit, 1 Corinthians 6, 19. So if God put so much effort into creating our bodies, we also have to take care of our bodies as well. And I have to, that's for me as well, for my personal goal as well. So everyone has their own personal goal. So that's the first aspect, physical self-care activities. And it, before we move on, it says, the Bible does not mention how to exercise physically, but there are many verses that provide analogies that represent the Christian experience as physical activities, such as fighting, the good fight, running a race, or even boxing. Isaiah 40, 31 reminds us that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, they shall mount up with eagles, with wings as eagles, they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Just as, just as our spirit needs to be renewed and strengthened, so does our bodies. Okay? And now, let's look at the mental self-care activities. So God is concerned with our mental health. Uh, we see there is a big issue, even here in the Virgin Islands, as regards to mental health. So even as we as Christians, we have to pay attention to our mental health. And John 14, 27 says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world give it. Give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So God wants us to have that peace, that peace that passes all understanding, and the peace that the world does not have, that perfect peace. So these are some activities we could do to take care of our mental health, taking a break, and enjoying silence. So even in the car, many times we're listening to music, which is a good thing, but sometimes we just need to have that silence and so we could hear from God. And Psalm 4610 says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations, and I will be exalted in the earth. So it shows that many times throughout the Bible, God spoke to, we talked about in meeting, God talked, about, talked to people through whispering. So we have to eliminate all the distractions and making sure we're taking time to be still and hear from God. Also, <clears throat> music is important as well. So singing psalms and hymns, Psalm 100, 1 to 2 says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord, but with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. So we should come, when we come to church, we have that excitement. We're singing glad, with gladness and excitement because we know God did, has done great stuff for us. Also, setting your mind on things above because we have so many th different things on earth that might, you know, concern us, make us anxious about the future. But if we set our minds on things above, as Colossians 3, 2 says, that will be encouraging for us, for our mental health. Also engaging in breathing exercises. I saw before the, the young brothers in Christ, before they sang, they took a breath. And that's a good thing to do before when we're feeling anxious, we're feeling overwhelmed. overwhelmed. We take time to just engage in breathing exercises and to calm ourselves down. Job 33, 4 says, The Spirit of God had made me, and the breath of the Almighty had given me life. So every time we're breathing in, we could realize that that's God's breath, that God is with us, and it's such a calming and such a reassuring thing. So every time we breathe in and breathe out, that's only because of God and his breath in our bodies. Also, engaging in a new or favorite hobbies. So maybe try something new. Go out there, you know, some might enjoy planting. Some might enjoy sports. Whatever it is, you know, find that passion. God gives us different gifts and talents to make sure that we're using it and finding our passions in the world. And lastly, seeking Christian counseling. It's important to seek counseling, but more importantly, Christian counseling. Proverbs 24, 6 says, For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war, and in multitude of counselors there is safety. So even coming to church and receiving counseling, for, whether from Pastor Luke and, you know, the elders or trusted elders, 
you could get that Christian counseling that could encourage you. But making sure that you're paying attention to your mental health. Yeah. And next slide, please. And we have to also pay attention to our emotional health. Nehemiah 8.10 says, the joy of the Lord is our strength. So we have to engage in oh, some activities we could do is practicing positive self-talk. And basically, lining up our words with the word of God. So these are some verses we could say. Philippians 4.13, we can always remind ourselves, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. So no matter what we're going through, we have that positive self-talk, that positive mindset, and reminded that God will strengthen us. Romans 8.28, and we know that all things work together for, them, for good to them that love God to them who are called according to his purpose. So at the end, no matter what our situation might look like, at the end, it will work out. Lastly, Philippians 4, 19. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So reminded, we all have our individual needs. God knows about it. He cares about it. Good. Provide us with those needs. Provide our needs. Okay, and next one is giving yourself grace. We know that God gives us grace, but many times we're not acknowledging that grace. We're still beating ourselves up and thinking about the past, but we have to embrace God's grace and give ourselves grace as well. Second Corinthians 12, 9 says, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So we're not perfect. We're going to make mistakes, but we know that God will always forgive us. So we can move on from there. Next one is journaling, writing down your feelings. You know, if you had a rough day or even a good day, write it down and express it, whether in journaling and writing as well. And it says, Jeremiah 32 Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. Writing down invites God's wisdom and clarity to how we think, speak, and live. Okay, so when we write it down, God, he could, we could take some time to reflect and get wisdom from God as well. Communicate your feelings with others. So even if it's a brother or sister, who offended you, we find a way to communicate it in a, in a respectful manner. And in psychology, they recommend that you say, I feel. That's something you could practice so you not, not feel like you're attacking the other person, but you could say, oh, I felt offended when you did something, but having that communication because many times the other person might not even know that you offended them, but being able to communicate how you feel, and more importantly, communicating with God how you feel. And in Sunday school, we had a question, why should we communicate how we feel if God already knows? But that deepens our relationship with him. And we could rely on him more and just feel like we could go to him and express how we feel. And lastly, casting your cares on him because our burdens are heavy, but he can handle it. So we don't have to walk around with any cares and any stress. We cast them all onto God. Yeah, and he cares for us. And lastly, our last um, um, aspect is on spiritual self-care. So spending time in nature. So that could be whether going to the beach, you know, enjoying a nature walk, a hike, you know, going out there and enjoying what God has created. Because, you know, we live on a beautiful island with many sceneries and many things that we could enjoy. So spending time in nature. Romans 8, 6. Uh, Roman 8, 6 says, or oh, for the importance of spiritual self-care before I get there, is Roman 8, 6, and it says, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Why we should care about spiritual self-care. And Psalm 145, 5 says, I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty and of thy wondrous works. So appreciating God's creation. Next, um, self-care activity, which is spiritual, is praying. First Thessalonians 5.17 reminds us to pray without ceasing, whether through the hills, the valleys, 
the good or bad times, we continually pray. Reading the Bible daily, Romans 15, 4 says, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So that is our daily instruction, our basic instruction for life. Reading the Bible daily, very important. And last one is practicing gratitude and reflecting on our blessings. So many days, things might not, al might not always go as planned. And, you know, we might focus on the negative, but instead we could express gratitude and focus on all that God did for us. Focus on the blessings. And taken from 1 Thessalonians 5.18, it says, In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So, yeah, even in a day, you could have a hundred things that went wrong, but at least you could thank God for the one thing that went right. And next slide, please. Prayer walk. So this is an activity that is highly recommended because it touches all the four buckets of self-care. For prayer walk, you physical is a physical activity. You're walking, you're getting your steps in. Also, it's a, a mental activity as well because it, sometimes when we need like a break, we could walk outside and get that, that um, space away. And also it's spiritual, as we know we're connecting with God as well. And also emotionally, a prayer walk. When you're walking with God, when you're walking on the, on the walk, you are telling God how you feel. You could say, you know, God, I give everything to you. I had such a rough day, but I'm expressing it, expressing how I feel. So prayer walk is highly recommended because it touched the four buckets of self-care. And lastly, we look at the goals of self-care according to God's plan. So the first one, God wants us to be attuned with ourselves and our needs. If we know our needs, we, we will be able to go to God and communicate it to him. First one. He also wants us to avoid burnout and fatigue. And He wants us to stay grounded in his word and stay grounded in things of him. You know, there are so many different things that will pull us side to side, whether we're in the hills or in the valleys, we'll stay grounded and we'll also stay encouraged in him. Also, he wants to, us to live how he intended. So he created us with a perfect plan and he wants us to carry out that plan and take care of ourselves, our temples that he created. Also, he wants us to replenish our buckets. So he, don't, he doesn't want us to go around with our buckets empty and, you know, we're just going day to day, not fulfilling anything. But he wants us to be filled up each day where we go to work, whatever our assignments are, we'll go in filled up and ready. And even when we come to church as well, we come filled up and ready for the, the worship experience. And lastly, he wants to pour into the bucket of others. So once we are taking care of ourselves, we could go out and encourage others and, you know, encourage them, lift them up as well. So it's not just ourselves, but we could reach out to those in the church, those outside as well. So God has a perfect plan for us. This is on self-care. Hopefully some things that we could take, some different activities that so we could live lives that's more meaningful and fulfilled and also take care of what God has given us. So I trust you are blessed. Amen, amen, amen. One, you have heard it here this morning. Always remember to take care of yourself and be able and be, once you take care of yourself, you'll be able to go out and bless others as well. Amen, amen.
wonderful job. Give him another round of applause. Amen, amen. And that comes and that ends our youth Sunday service where you are. <laughs> amen, amen. Thank you all for coming to our service. I'm glad that you all were blessed. Oh, and before I forget, Sister Kayel forgot to announce this. Um, for church conference, if you want paper ballots, please make sure to see Sister Louise Jennings after church. And let us all stand as we close out in our word of prayer. Okay, thank you, Pastor. Okay, thank you. May the Lord bless you. Oh, are you? No, may the you and keep the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.